folks, welcome to another Boats and Bits. In this episode, I am going to cover the age old dilemma of how do you run a VHF and an AIS transponder on your boat at the same time? Now, there are a few ways to tackle this, and I'm going to go for one that suited me. Um, your sort of mileage may differ, but um, for me, I see three ways of tackling this. One is getting a splitter. Um, going by the internet, they have about 300 quid. Um, for me, that kind of rules it out. Um, the reason being is um, 300 quid is a lot of money when you think I bought the chart plotter with a transponder for that, so I don't want to spend a lot of the 300 pounds. Um, second option, um, which was more the budget one, um, so I ordered this here in AliExpress. It's uh, Apparently it's an AIS VHF splitter. Um, it's a Matsui, um, yeah, Matsu Tech thing. But I've opened it up. And it literally is uh, <coughs> two tracks with a resistor in between them. So I highly suggest that this is for receive only. And even if you were just receiving, um, the likelihood is you're going to lose massive. I know it's like 3 dB is what rated. So you're going to lose a massive amount of signal with that. Um, the third and final option, and this was the one I went with, um, was a extra antenna. So if you think about it, um, an antenna for a boat isn't that dear. Um, now, I managed to get one from AliExpress and I have it hooked up to my um, my Onwa chart, plot, chart plotter with AIS transponder and I've been kind of just testing it how it's working. Um, the benefit of an extra antenna is basically, and this one, the one I've bought, is actually going to be on mounted on the back, not the mast. Um, this actually has two benefits. One, you've obviously got a uh, <coughs> AIS transponder and VHF running at the same time. The second one is, well, if you're unfortunate, your mask goes down, well, you can actually just switch over your VHF and you've got another antenna to run by. Um, so it is actually a benefit that way. Uh, but I'll show you the setup and I'll stick links down below to this here. Uh, as I say, I will not even bother sticking a link to that there. I'm not gonna stick a link to the other antenna jobs just really outside the, the scope of this channel, I'm sort of more into the budget things. Um, but an extra antenna, and you can put another one at the top of your, your what do you call it, your mast as well. But I think for me, um, I don't really need a massive amount of AIS range. Um, so, you know, and I've seen these here, you know, tested out in the water and the, the wee small antennas do go for quite some distance. Um, so I'm gonna give it a whack anyway, but I shall show you how it all hooks up. So here we have it. Uh, it comes with a five meter long cable. Um, that bit out. Yep, okay, so here's how it comes here. So it comes with a, a proper connector. I think this was the PL229 or whatever it is. Um, and then it goes around here. So there's a bracket. You get these here. Now it's quite small, dinky, bendy rubber. So it's not gonna be too intrusive at the back. Um, and it comes with these U-bolts, which will fit nicely around my push pit. So I'll just go out the back and I'll get a hole just where I have my uh, autopilot and stuff and I'll route that back in, into the into the cabin. Um, but yes, that'll work with my VHF. Um, it works with this on my plotter, so it plugs straight in. Um, as you can see, plug straight in. Uh, so I've been testing here, tested the other day, um, and what I'll do is I'll show you just, just a quite brief test, just receiving, this is uh, AIS transponder, uh, or transmitter, sorry. And this, I've done another video, which is quite popular, but this is a new one I've got, and I'll probably do an update just to cover the solar powered version. Um, but I'll do a quick test here just to show this, which transmits being received on the AIS. So yeah, we are getting signal. All good. Um, so that is working. Now what I need to do is test it with a bit more distance and provide a bit more feedback. But I'll, next thing I need to do is get this installed. So that'll probably be one of the future videos. And uh, I need to cut a hole and get this fitted. Uh, so there you have it folks, three options. Uh, option number one, the expensive antenna splitter and uh, things I like got there. And uh, there's plenty on the market. I've seen them from, you know, 250 quid upwards. And uh, for me, when I spend 300 pounds on a chart plotter, and um, that's gonna cost as much 
it sort of put me off. If you look at an antenna, even a probably like a, a deer one on, on a marine website, it's not going to be over a hundred quid. And I, even with the cable on, I don't think it's you know it's going to be much more than a hundred. Um, and if you price around, you'll get it cheaper still. So you probably get it for less than a hundred, maybe even less than fifty. Um, I went for the super budget, as is in keeping with my channel, and this cost ten pounds. Uh, it comes with five meters of coax cable, the right connector, and obviously the wee stubby antenna. Um, so that should hopefully do my job just on the back of my boat. It'll be interesting to test it out. Um, the option, second option, which was the Matsu Tech, I don't think is an option at all, really. Um, might be okay for receiving. Certainly wouldn't want to be putting 25 watts or 5 watts through it. Um, maybe blow up the AIS transponder or blow up my chart plotter. So we certainly don't want that to happen. Um, but if you have any suggestions or have done something similar in your boat, love to hear from you. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I shall catch you all again soon. If you want to click like and subscribe, we'd much appreciate it. Again, thanks. See you all soon. Bye.